Save your cries and save your tears, for it's the duty of my life. Maro, ma, you told me once, don't ever march to war, for all you'll find is death alone on the cold floor. Maro, ma, pray for me and pray through the night. The enemy comes and marches to bring to us the fight. Maro, ma, you told me once, don't ever march to war. For all you'll find is death alone on the cold floor. Ma, oh ma, I should have heeded the lessons that you taught. For now I lay alone, dying on the cold floor. Mar, oh Mar, you told me once, don't ever march to war. For all you'll find is death alone on the cold floor. Mar, oh Mar, please forgive me for what I've done. I marched to fight, and now you have no son. Mar, oh ma, I thank you for giving me my life. If I could live again, I'd heed your advice. But ma, don't grieve me too much. I've done my duty now in life. Ma, oh ma, you told me once, don't ever march to war. For all you'll find is death alone. On the cold floor. Gods, what cruel tricks you play on me. For all our great victories, it can all be undone by one defeat. You mean Eze's ambition and brazenness he mistook for bravery. And now he lies dead. Disgraced and defeated, my northern army is utterly destroyed, and rumour tells tales of horror for those that were captured. They say they dragged those alive behind their horses back to their new capital, and those that survived the journey were in the hands of the mobs of people braying for punishment. Gods, give me strength. I do not wish to imagine the pain inflicted upon my men, but now I cannot wallow in the thought of their deaths. Eumenes has opened the door for all our enemies, and while I continue down the Nile to defeat the remnants of the Ptolemies, our rivals see opportunity. Pergamon betrays us, but Ariathus must put a stop to that and whip those dogs into shape. The Antigonids have sided with them, and it is clear to me that they do not see us as true Greeks. Yes, my grandmother was Persian, but that is not my weakness. That is my strength, to walk among the common man and soldier and be at one with them. Only the perfumed oligarchs of Greece would see that as frailty, but in the north, our situation is near breaking point. The Bactrians are coming.
coming for us, and the horse lords are buoyed by victory. If we do not hold them, the enemy will run rampant through our eastern satrapies and threaten Babylonia itself. This cannot happen, but it is for once outside of my control. So gods, you have taught me your lesson on brazenness, and it is solidified. But I pray to you now that you teach me a lesson in strength, in strength of my people, so that our lands, lands that we've shed so much blood for, remain in our hands. I pray you give me this lesson, gods, lest we be destroyed. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are continuing our Seleucid campaign in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.5. And today I didn't say Serection, so it's going to be a great day and a great episode. Better than, uh, <laughs> better than previously, maybe. Now, I have noticed that I have missed a rebel settlement over here. Thank you to uh, the commenter who commented that before. There's actually a rebel settlement in here that I've missed conquering. So we'll have to get that at some point. But for now, Pergamon is the greatest issue that we're going to be dealing with over here. I hope you enjoyed the intro, by the way, guys. It was a very uh, sort of different intro to usual. A little bit of a folk song, if I was brave enough to put it in there, which I'm not sure... I am at this point, but I, I think I will put it in there anyway. See what you guys think. Um, that's actually, just a little bit of a tidbit, that's actually taken from some writing that I'm doing or uh, working on a novel about uh, dwarf clans. So if you have got to this point of the video, guys, I know we're very early in, please do comment down below whether you enjoyed that intro song and whether you'd like to see some of those writings on a different channel. Uh, and comment uh, whether you're a Clan Gar or Clan Scar. It won't mean anything to you yet, but <laughs> which one do you prefer the sound of anyway? Right, let's get into the video. Last episode, of course, was not amazing. Um, <laughs> it was brutal. The Summer of Blood, they are calling it in northern Seleucia right now. The Summer of Blood, yes. Not a great start to our campaign in the north, was it? I mean, it started fantastically taking Nisa, etc. Now it has uh, kind of gone wrong. Um, so we are building up our forces once again. And I'm, I don't want to take these forces out before I have enough for two armies. And I want to do two armies on the field there. But without further ado, guys, let's press the end turn. You've heard enough of me blabbing on so far. Um, but yeah. I mean, I, st I still don't think it's a disaster situation. Worst case scenario, the AI is, is quite slow at trying to uh, take settlements. So, I think worst case scenario, we could send an army all the way from around Seleucia, honestly, and we'd still be okay and not have a big disaster. So they've got some Katoikoi Phalangites, some Greek Hoplites, some Zistophori, and on the other army, some more Phalangites, some Theroporoi, some and some more Zistophori and Prodromoi. I honestly don't think this is going to be an issue for us to deal with, but it sounds like a good little battle that we can get straight into. Euclides the Philosopher. Well, Ariathus the Conqueror will destroy Euclides the Philosopher, beat him to a pulp, I believe. But anyway, let's get into the battle, guys. So, I will see you on the battle map. Here we are, guys. It's a good day to die. <clears throat> and we've got a nice little uh, temple out here in the woods as well. Beautiful. Yes, Ariathus. And look at the experience on this army. It is glorious to see. I think, honestly, we're going to take up a defensive position. Two reasons being, firstly, that we are the defensive army, so we have that right, of course. Um, and secondly, get our Theroporoi in there, let's get them ready to fire. And we'll get these boys in here as well, make sure these boys are ready to fire. And secondly, the reason why we're going to take a defensive viewpoint is because I want that second army of Pergamon to come in to the fight. 
Um, in fact, we should move this whole line slightly down the hill so we can fire over them. Um, I want the second army to be able to come into the fight and commit to it. I don't want them to withdraw because I want to destroy them. So I don't need to do the siege battle, which obviously they take forever, the siege battles. And of course, you're going to lose a lot more men on any siege battle you do than any other type of battle that you're going to do. Unless, you know, you're some sort of a... Yeah, there's specific situations where you won't. But most of the time, you will. And there's his army down there. They're going to try and maneuver around us. They don't like... The AI The AI really hates going against phalanxes. But it looks like the other army's going left. So why would they split up their army like that? I have no clue. And yeah, the, the cavalry's over there. We're going to bring our cavalry. I've got my Ellie still. I really... I just... At the minute, they're just a bit too valuable to sort of waste or use a lot of... Now, where... What is he doing over there? He's literally just waiting. I wonder whether he's... He really is a philosopher. He's sat here watching. He can even see the battle. Thinking, should he go? Hmm. Should I join battle or not today? I am a philosopher after all. What is a battle? And more importantly, why is a battle? That's what he's thinking right now, <laughs> as he's trying to uh, trying to decide whether to join the fray. I, I think he's going to withdraw, because surely he's not going to sit there on the edge of the battlefield just watching his men die. But it looks like he is. <laughs> sure, really a true philosopher there, then. Our archer's doing some good damage over there. How far can we fire? Because I would like to take out some of that prodromoy. Well, they've already fired their javis. That's good. Already done some damage to that Theroporoi unit. Look at that. The javis coming in thick and fast. Well, let's start maneuvering ourselves. He's still sitting there. He's definitely going to withdraw after we've destroyed this army. I mean, it gives us piecemeal attempts to destroy his army anyway. Uh, I kind of want to just see what he does with his cavalry. He's got his Zistaforoi over in this way as well. Let's get up here if we can. We're going to cut right in front of him. But is he going to go for the charge? That is the question. We really don't need to adjust our lines right now. How are my archers? What are they doing? Don't do that, bro. Just get into position. We're getting shot by someone. It must be the Prodromoy, surely. But surely they don't have the range there. Wait, where did his Zistaforoi go? Ah, oh, there they are. That's, that's why we're losing men. <laughs> ah. You really wanted to kick the hornet's nest, didn't you? <laughs> Zistaforoi unit. <laughs> They're already starting to break. Unhappy overtaking casualties. And they are taking a lot of casualties. Boys... Focus on the Prodromoy, please. Yeah, we've pretty much surrounded that Zista 4. If we can kill it all, that'd be great. Or at least nearly everyone in the unit. Right, let's try and maneuver around the back of this Prodromoy so they've got nowhere to go. I mean, they are falling like flies right now. And then we'll quickly charge the Theroporoi as well. What a fantastic army we've got here. Look at the experience on these boys. It is so good to finally have some armies with some great experience. Oh, and the Theroporoi have already broken. And the uh, Katoikoi. Everyone's breaking. Let's get in there then. I would like you guys to chase them. You guys to chase them. You guys can charge these guy. Is he bugged out? I, I don't know. What is he doing? I mean, I guess we'll go and fight him, but okay. Right, missile men. Let's get over here. I think we don't need that many men. I think we'll just take a few of them. Uh, you guys start running. Uh, and then the two Zista Foroi as well. We'll send them across. And 
You boys, yeah, you've pretty much destroyed everyone in your path, haven't you? Is there anyone left? Well, the generals are still... Yeah, they were chasing someone. Right, let's speed it up. They don't look like they're withdrawing. Maybe they're a little bit bugged. Maybe there's something to do with the pathing or something in the corner of this battle map, but I don't know. Right, come on, boys. They're not moving yet. I think they will move when we start pelting them with arrows. <laughs> this is a nice little hill to pelt them up, uh, pelt them with arrows from. But we are making our men a little bit tired. Just slow it down for a second. Get you guys there. So we'll get you guys in here as well. And we'll really corner them off. Um, I think we'll take our whole cavalry contingent all up together over here. We don't need the elephants again. Not going to be needed. They are like a last minute resort. Last, uh, you know, last resort sort of uh, tactic there using the Ellies. Will they even start moving now? That is the question. It should be in range because of the uh, height bonus. Yeah, they should all be in range. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like they uh, want to move. So. Let's come forward slightly. What are you? Okay, yep, they've not got Javis, so that's not a problem either. It's good. Let's just keep going forward. I'm not going to... Like, if I was really doing a min-max campaign, I would... Uh... Oh, my God. These guys are so tired. Poor guys. Okay, they did move one thing. <laughs> yeah, if I was really doing a min-max campaign, I would just sit up here and shoot them to death. But, yeah, I'm not too bothered by doing that. That's a bit gamey. Oh, there is, yeah. There is some sort of pathing thing here, look. They don't want to come over this hill. These poor guys are so tired. Just get you forward. Oh. Hello, Zista Foray. Where did you come from? They must have been hiding. Well, that's maybe why. Maybe the Zista Foray hadn't managed to get into the battle map yet. But now we're just chucking Javis in them at them for free. As the Greek Hoplites are taking more and more damage. I was hoping we'd get some experience with these missile units. I mean, the Katoikoi are the ones we want to ch focus on. Some more Javis still being thrown, which is great. Right, boys. Time to march forward, I believe. With Phalanx formation. And you guys get in the Zista 4, right? This is, like, right on the edge of the battle map here. So we're not going to be able to do much with our cavalry. We're just going to have to hem them in. If we, can, if we can destroy this army, that would be surprising, to say the least. <laughs> now they come forward. Okay. I'm going to try use... I'm going to try use the uh, fresh Zista Foray. They've not been blooded yet. I'm going to bring my uh, cavalry down here as well. Okay, that's good. We've got a n nice little... Uh, now just squish them against the uh, edge of the map. There we are. Fantastic. You guys halt. You guys come forward as well. Keep coming. Keep walking until you start attacking the philosopher. <laughs> Wait, who is... Why are you dying? I think we need to stop you guys firing. That's probably why we're di dying so much. Unless... Yeah. The Katoikoi must be quite good. Let's have a look. 39, 23, 21. What's that compared to ours? I mean, our guys are better, but... Oh, come on. That's got to be a break, surely. I mean, they've still got their general. That's the one thing. Oh, the Zista 4 are surviving quite well. Let's get there. God, that Chalka Speed has taken an absolute battering there. 
Thought the hoplites would be a little bit easier to break, I'm not going to lie. Let's uh, do a rally. Keep the boys happy. God, the Zista 4, uh, the general bodyguard does not like getting in on the action, does he? That's where he earns his name as the philosopher. <laughs> okay, you guys have won. Get over here. Get there. Ideally, I want to kind of try and surround them so that they can't escape. Come on, Zista 4. I know you're a strong boy unit. Come on, break these boys. God, they've been absolutely shredded. The Katoikoi phalangites have just destroyed them. And you guys to try and run behind. Same with you guys. You guys can get in on the action. Everyone's a bit tired. I do know that. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We're going to fully surround these boys so that they'll they won't be able to escape and we'll destroy them. Charge that 13 hoplites. That should destroy that unit, surely. Kill the bodyguard. See, even the Theroporoi, I'm not too bothered about. I don't think they're going to have too much of a problem. Right, ideally, what I want you to do is come here, and then we're going to create a line right around the back. Uh, and then, yeah, cavalry just get there. Let's do that. And try and surround these boyos. And then we're going to charge into the back of them. Well, not charge. Walk our phalanx into the back of them. <laughs> Once that general's dead, I think they're going to they're gonna crack. Like an egg. Come on. Kill him. I mean... These guys are set on phalanx, right? You're down to 23 men. Brutal. They're exhausted as well, which is definitely part of it. Keep coming. I don't care if you touch any of these guys. That's fine. Just walk through them. If I charge these guys in the side now, I'm going to lose a few men on the front of the pikes. But it should do some decent damage. Now back out. Oh, the general survived. No. Right, you guys halt now. They should fully squish them. Let's rally the men. God, this group of six. I'm going to have to get them out. Just get out. I don't want you to survive anymore. <laughs> I want you to live. You've got three silver experience. Yeah, I probably rushed them in too much. I should have just taken my time. They got exhausted. And that became a big issue. But with the general surviving as well, they'll still have men inside the city. Ah, So that's going to be a bit annoying. But I think we'll probably be at the point where we can auto-resolve it. But nice little battle up against Pergamon anyway. I ah, just love just how good do these troops look. They look so good, especially in the, the melee of battle over here. Surely this will kill them. Yeah, there we are. And they're going to try and fight to the death, but hopefully we can give them an escape route. I just can't believe this Chalka Speeders went down to four men. Everyone else is hardly touched. Hardly touched. <laughs> and they went down to four. Everyone fight those Greek Hoplites. I think we'll just end the battle there. I don't think we need to carry on. Yeah, Euclides, 31 men left, 14 of the other one. Good job, my man. See, this Chalka Speed has got, took 11 losses and killed 175. This one took 118 and killed 13. Oh, ho, ho. that's not ideal, is it? <laughs> um, where does this to four right? Doing okay as well. Fine. Oh, good. And archers just doing steady, steady kills there, the archers. Fantastic. Well then, guys, I will see you back on the campaign map. Here we are, guys. And it does look like they survived, which is, you know, not amazing, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I will send that Chalka Speeders back for retraining to Sardis because, of course, <laughs> they are pretty damaged. It's slightly jarring having this plague in Seleucia right now. 
Still going on. Because look at that. We were on, was it 14,000 per turn because of the trade in this place? So hopefully we can get that public bath up and running. And that helps the trade. We've got a bit of civil disorder. Chalcodon, oh, again. These places down here are really, really not ideal. Uh, they're really unhappy. Harmosia, really unhappy. And there's honestly probably not much we can do about that. If you could get there in two turns, that might stop it rebelling. Why is it suddenly so unhappy? Bit more squalor. Really needs an upgrade into becoming a minor city. Oh, we'll repair that as well. That should give us 10% law. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else here that's going to give happiness. That 10% law will take us up to 68%, and then hopefully we can get the men down there. We'll recruit a couple of Akantistai in there anyway, so let's keep on. Uh, that should solve that one. This one, I don't know. Culture penalty, distance to capital, squalor. Squalor again. Repair that. That is another 15%. So that was on 70 and rebelled. Mm, I think we'll get the trader in there as well. Just so that we uh, build up a little bit quicker to get to the next level. So we've got more options for buildings and happiness buildings. And then we've got Abydos down here as well. That should solve it. But I'm not convinced. So Harmosia was the main issue. Chalcodon as well though. Hmm. We're just so thin on the ground with troops around here because that's on 70 now. That's solved Chalcodon for now. Now Kratis has upgraded. That's nice to see. Fantastic. Death stalks the land of Seleucia. 1,800 people have died. We're so close to becoming a huge city as well. Lots of children being born. That is fantastic. And now we've got our sort of uh, general spread out around the map. Uh, we should get that for an extra 5%. Good lord. It's a bit scary, a lot of these places right now. How much of that money that we've just made has been lost to corruption? Oof. So um, I've been informed by Moscow Flacker, one of the mod team, that it is, in fact... 65% uh, is the max corruption you can have compared to your income. So we're not quite at that over here, but it's still not great. That mining 2,400, though, is fantastic. Um, but yeah, very nice. But again, yeah, a bit of corruption out here in the sticks, definitely. Right, let's get these boys in, if we can. And yeah, we're probably going to... Get you guys out and you guys in. The horse archers and that are not going to be that useful in a uh, defensive siege. So, yeah. We'll leave you there on the river crossing. Bactria haven't moved. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, they haven't. And in fact, Adimanthos is actually quite a good general. Four stars already. He's a drill master, which is less morale, but better movement and one law. He's a good commander. He's an optimist. He's confident. Even-handed, sharp, publicly loyal, night fighter, and in friendly territory. So he's good. He's a good. He's definitely a good commander, uh, and we'll use him to the best of our ability. We still recruiting the archers down there. We are. So let's uh, let's take this. Let's take Pergamon off Pergamon anyway. Finally, the philosopher is dead. Ooh, that is. Juicy, 12,000 people. Gaza has upgraded from that. And so has Gabai. Taking them below. But that should, hopefully, take them back above. Uh, a useful amount. Get you. Yeah, come round. I wonder what size army they will have here. Quite big, it seems. Arabian archers, Arabian swordsmen, and Nabataean horse archers. Yep, that's fine, though. 
Where was the place that we could recruit around here? Ah, it's gonna be uh, Jerusalem. We will be able to recruit in Jerusalem very soon, and that will help a lot with the public order around these regions. Um, yeah, we want to get more Akantistai, really. That's terrible. 55%. Really struggling with public order right now. And that is just a constant struggle, isn't it? Throughout this whole campaign so far. Now, you boys... Let's, uh... Try and merge a few. See whether we could have got some more experience. No. Doesn't look like it. Uh, into there. No, that's not given any. It's only two men, so very unlikely that it will do anything. Yeah, I think... You go into there. Yeah, I think that's fine. This 18, though... Uh, yeah, you and you can come back to Sardis for retraining. As we're training more and more troops in Sardis. Retrain all those boys. And yeah, we'll look at trying to get, say, this Akontistai into Pergamon next turn. Oh, they've got some upgrades in here. Very nice. Look at that. Merchant's Quarter, Royal Barracks. Fantastic. It's what we like to see. Get everything rebuilt. And I think the first thing we go for is just Seleucid Recruitment. This is going to be a big recruitment hub for us. It's our first huge city, I believe. Unless... No, is Memphis a huge city? It doesn't look like it. No, Memphis is a minor city. And Alexandria is a large city. Probably going to become a huge city soon. But yeah. Wow. First huge city that we actually have. And we stole it off Pergamon. <laughs> so great. Thank you, Pergamon, for that. And um, we will go for Adramition as well, and then we'll go for Mytilene, and then Chaos as well. Nice. Very nice indeed. So we've got you there, we've got you guys. Yeah, we're not going to take this fight just yet because of the plague. Still going to leave it, see whether they do get rid of the plague, because how bad would it be <laughs> if Antiochus just died of the plague after all he's done for our nation? That would be really just a heartbreaking end to his life. Dying of the plague. Not something we really want to happen. Uh, but we'll retrain those boys. Yeah. It's going to be a bloody, bloody war against Parthia. They only have two, two places, but I already know that it's just going to be brutal, brutal, brutal war out there. Really brutal. Right then, are we at the end of the turn? I believe so. So let's uh, end that. We are moving another commander up this way. Oh, that's quite annoying. It is annoying that they just path into <laughs> settlements that they know are going to be... Uh, yeah, are not going to be great. Are you kidding me, Ptolemies? Am I going to regicide you here? It would actually be better if I regicided, regicided them, honestly, because that means we don't need to go down the coast and take the sort of colonies they've got right on the tip of, er like, around Eritrea and Djibouti down there. So, they have a lot. <laughs> what are these armies, man? What are, the, what are you building, AI? Four generals, loads of missile troops, and one infantry. Oh, well. <laughs> I can't see us having a problem with that. I'm not going to lie. So, let's get into the battle, guys. And I will see you all on the glorious battle map. And look, this is a fine day for battle. Battle. Every day oh, is a fine God. Day for look at that hill. When your heart is brave. I'm not going to lie, guys. I, w <laughs> I was going to... I was thinking about going out. <laughs> and uh, attacking them. But when the gods grant you such gifts, you cannot turn them down, guys. When the RNG gods give you such a gift, you must thank RNG Jesus and <laughs> just accept <laughs> that this is what you're going to do. <laughs> Sit on top of the hill. I know we've had two sort of defensive... Well, the last battle was actually not purely defensive. Um... It's just, it's, it is hard to attack with uh, Phalangites. I don't believe anyone will be coming in from behind us. So I think we're good with that. 
And of course, we have Antiochus, our glorious, glorious leader. Let's have a look at him on the battle map. There he is. He has been through many, many campaigns. All of them against the Ptolemies, pretty much. Well, no, yeah, all of them against the Ptolemies, in fact. He has spent his entire life fighting them. Over 20 years of his life, he has been on campaign with his army. What a legend of the Seleucid Empire. Oh, there is one coming in, and they're coming in here. Hello! <laughs> Hello! Welcome to the battle map. Let us go and kill them all. I love this music. It's awesome. And there's their other sort of general. They've got to go for the charge, surely. That's all they're going to get out of this. I think a charge from all my Zistophori and my general is going to break that Theroporoi to pieces. So, let's go for it. You guys turn off that for now. This has got to be a big charge, surely. Yep, that was massive. Turn that back on. No, we might actually not kill that general. Which won't be great. But we've destroyed the Theroporoi. I'm hoping he comes back, honestly. But well, look at this Oren. Oren Jesus has been good to us today. Get on top of those little mounds. Oren Jesus has been very good to us today. Ideally, I would like to be able to shoot at those guys. Don't know why he's going to try and flank around this side. I'm not sure that's going to work. You're called Antiochus. No. We are the only Antiochus. Okay. Kind of lost. Kind of lost that name. I will right, we'll go for that general as well. It's annoying that that general survived. But, oh well. It's only down to two men. Rally so you don't get into the fight. Come on, Sister Foray, what are you doing? Your general is in need. Is this their... This must be their faction leader. He's got a huge general's bodyguard. Anti and he's called Antiochus as well now. But we have gone through a lot of their generals. Like a lot of them. Get those boys. Here they come. And here comes Atalos as well. And yeah. He is at a loss of what to do facing this wall of spikes. <laughs> oh god, I enjoyed that too much. Just close up a little bit, boys. Don't get cocky. This battle... That's their king, yes. <laughs> Basilius Antiochus of the Ptolemaic. Mm, it's not even an empire anymore. The Kingdom of the Nile, I think we should call it now, uh, has been killed. You're not withdrawing, are you? Uh, they're just like, nah. <laughs> they came up, they came over this and were like, nah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to fight up that, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, it's time to get our cavalry in on the action, isn't it? He's got still lots of generals bodyguards, so we do have to be careful. The enemy general is slain, and now he's That's the next general up. dead. Time to press the attack. That's Atalus. Poor Akantistai. <laughs> they are going to be shredded. And here comes... I think we need to move down. I don't, I don't think they're going to take the fight up to us. Uh, let's get our Chalcus Speed Airs marching down the hill. If we can. Oh, oh. We literally just vaporized that unit. God damn it. Poor guys. Watch out. You're going to be charging the flank, boys. You guys get in there as well. Um, and who do we go after now? Probably Alexarchus. Uh, this is the problem here. Now he's routing. He's, he's probably not going to die unless we can catch him unawares. Where's three? Oh, there he is. He's just escaped. The bastard. Fire at him. At least with the cavalry, we can, uh, yeah, just surround them and just kill them. 
That's our other one, Axilus. We're not going to actually, probably not going to kill as many as we thought we were going to originally. Can we get into those guys, though? And kill Axilus? Oh, he's still alive. Oh, wait, no. We've killed Alexarkos and we've killed Axilus. There was two more, maybe? That we're missing? But anyway... Get Antiochus, you chase them, and then let's just speed it up and see whether we can catch that general. I don't think we can. But anyway, it's fine. You guys go after them. Yeah, we're not going to catch his cavalry, but you guys go and help there. Okay, good. Good. Some lovely little battles to get us warmed up for the war that is to come against Parthia. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, deary, deary me, Ptolemies. I mean, faced with that hill, what <laughs> what could have happened? I mean, the most we were, casualties were sustained was eight on one of our Chalka Speeders units, and that's just from missiles. Very good. Fantastic battle. Well done, boys. Anyway, I will see you all again on the campaign map. Here we are, guys. And it did mean that we didn't take the settlement, which is great for us because I don't want that plague. <laughs> um, I don't think it's going to go, though, is it? It's kind of annoying, but... Oh, well. What are you talking about? Pergamon, just really, really, just... I am shocked by your brazenness, honestly. Please tell me you're besieging. Yes, come on, Bactria. Bactria decides to attack us in there. That'll be fantastic. We've got so many archers in there now as well. I think we'll do an absolute devastating blow to those goddamn Bactrians. So you're telling me that we still got plague in Seleucia? God damn it. So, we are going to get one of you guys into Jerusalem. And then I think... We'll probably go with Samaria as well. Yeah, the rest of them are just large towns. Is any of these tire? I think... Ooh. Yeah, I think... No, Sidon. We'll go for Jerusalem and Sidon over here. More civil disorder, of course. Halicarnassus this time. And they damaged everything. Oh, no, they just damaged that. Oh, they've killed Abantes as well. That's not good, is it? Um, what's that? That's 15%, so that's 47. Ah. Uh, we don't sit pretty at the minute. That's only gone up 10%. Are you kidding me? So if I leave Nidos, is Nidos happy? It is. So let's go and have a look. We've got two influence. That's just brought it up. God, I hate to see the amount of money we're running on upkeep right now. Again, Harmosia. This has got it. This has got to solve it. Otherwise, we're done for over here. Sixty-eight. That should be enough. If it's not, Harmosia is going to rebel. Um, let's get that sewer and. It's only 70 as well. well. That's not close enough. My Lord. I mean, if we remove one of you, we'll send you there. That saves that one. If I go here, that saves that one. And at the minute, we don't need another unit there, but I am going to get a Greek Peltas just in case. We've got Harmayas has come of age. Good. And I'm tempted to put you in Syrinx Trabax. Keep them happy. Keep them growing. Again, Seleucia, just more and more pain and suffering. We did manage to get the baths, though. Oh, wait. Yeah, I was going to say we were looking at something else there. 
Good. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to lie. I am quite happy with that. I'm going to come around and join those two armies together. Why have we got cheering? What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we're the most advanced faction again or something like that. Oh, we are, yeah. Oh, no, the Antigonids are. God damn! Not the Antigonids! No! That's supposed to be me. You were the chosen one! Uh, anyway. Uh, let's ignore I've said any of that stuff. Right. Um... Let's carry on down here. Are we still getting our Akontistai? Also, I was building a recruitment center somewhere, wasn't I? Oh, it's here. It's good. Well, while we have this, these two Akontistai, we're going to come down. Uh, and then we're going to start recruiting Akontistai and Lycon Polis. And again, like I said, we're not going to go aggressively against that one up there. Are we still recruiting archers over here? Keep going. It, worst case scenario, if we have too many archers, they're not that expensive of upkeep. Um, upkeep only of 300, which is way cheaper than our infantry units. So look at these boys. 874, so more than double for the infantry. So they're really cheap. And on top of that, if we have too many, we'll just use them as garrisons in some of these cities. Um... Which is fine, because we need garrisons anyway in order to keep up a fast rate of conquest. So, let's get that retraining queued. But it's very likely... Oh, we could go for the army barracks. I think we do. I think we do. I think we do. Or do we go for the hippodrome for the Zistophoroite? I think we go for the... No, there's so much... There's so much good... Good troops around, uh, good cavalry mercenaries around this region. That I honestly don't think we need to go for, go for that. So yeah, we've moved everyone, haven't we? Apart from down here. So you got retrained, and one Zister Four I did as well. But that's fine. I think we'll carry on. Arathus the Cruel. Really? That doesn't seem fair at all. My lord. Can you get in there? You can, and it only brings it up to 25%. Hmm. Well, that's not ideal, is it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, I mean, we don't really need these archers. Although, sieging down these cities, we probably should have them. So what is the major issue right now with public order? Culture penalty, distance capital, squalor, and unrest. 25% of unrest. That would take us up to 70. Oh, it's because they're all different culture buildings. But luckily, we can upgrade a few of them, and they will become our culture. I think I'm going to get rid of... Oh, we can't actually destroy that elite tax. Really? I can't destroy that elite tax building. I was going to destroy that for the culture because we don't need it. Um, well, I guess we're just going to have to sit in here for a little longer. Uh, we're recruiting archers right now. Is there anywhere else we can recruit Akontistai? We can recruit Greek, Greek Peltaster? Yeah, Akontistai. Let's recruit a few of those in uh, Thyatira. Thyatira. I do want to go fast against Pergamon, but oh, honestly, yeah. Let's take, take the Ellies. Leave two of the Archers. We'll take the Chalka Speeders and the Zistaphoroi and a couple of those boys, and we'll leave that many, and surely that's enough. Really, it's not. Pergamon is a tough nut to crack. I don't think calling Arathus the Cruel is, is really a nice nice thing to do. Oh, 15% uh, of that unrest is coming from this spy as well. So that's not ideal. Ah, but anyway. What the hell, Pergamon? Where have you brought that army from? Oh, we've got an extra general in here. I think a few of these guys are going to die soon. So, yeah. 
We'll probably use him to fill in wherever he can. Yeah, there's it's going to be a mass death of a lot of these guys all at the same time because they got adopted very early on and they're all about in the late 50s. Uh, we didn't have a civil unrest that turn, so that's really, really promising. Oh, no, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, oh, and we have this battle to do. So let's finish on this, I guess. Do we have archers? We do. So that is really going to be our, our big boon here. And we've got Mithro Buzanis. That is an awesome name. Really fantastic name. <laughs> Mithro Buzanis. Antiochus the Angry. My faction heir, my second son, is known as Antiochus the Angry. He's an angry man. Let's have a look at... He must have, like, a really... This man has an excess of spleen that makes him easy to annoy and slow to forget a slight. Minus three influence. Hmm. He has a lot of kids, though. He's He doesn't like alcohol, so it's not alcohol-induced. He's ugly. Maybe that's why he's angry. And he's a Seleucid, of course. He's, hot, he's even hot-headed as well. <laughs> Sharp, optimist, hasty. I like this character. I am going to like writing intros for this character when we get to him. Definitely. <laughs> I, he's conceited as well. <laughs> oh, these are going to be such fun intros. He's an optimist, but he's also conceited and very angry. <laughs> what a weird mix of traits. That is cool. I Yeah, I can tell you there's going to be some fun intros coming from Antiochus III. <laughs> he's going to be an angry little man. Angry at the world and the position he's been put into. But let's uh, let's fight this battle nonetheless. With angry Antiochus. I'll see you on the battle map, guys. Here we are, guys. Spear and shield. Put on your helmet. Put aside the fear in your heart. And remember that you are the sons of great soldiers. Antiochus the angry, eh? But um, interestingly enough... I wish, I kind of wish, like, the original Rome, like, that's where the speeches come from, right? I wish it had, um, really wish it had, well, they might man the walls here. That's going to be a bit of an issue if they do. Um, I wish they had personalized ones like they do for the Romans. Like, if they have angry traits, they'll be very angry in the, uh, in the intro and all that sort of thing. Okay, no, uh, they're up here. Who are you? The Arabian swordsmen Ara and Arabian archers. Well, get rid of that. There you go over there. And then we'll get you up here. And then what I'm going to do, we'll send up this Greek hoplites unit. You quickly get on there. And then we'll send up a green Theroporoi to just distract these guys. They're probably going to die, but it's okay. It's okay. Antiochus is angry. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is fantastic. Right, let's speed it up like we usually do. And they've got their mercenary Arabian swordsmen up here as well. Guys, get there. Yeah, they're getting shot to pieces. Uh... Run away. Run away. Run away, boys, if you can. Be ideal. Take those towers. Just run. Just run. You might have to run and just keep running. Okay, they're all filtering through this way. Make sure we've got all these guys on fire at will. Guys, you're not going to win that. Come on. I told you to run away. And what are you doing? Really struggling to put those ladders up, aren't you? Okay. That archer's dead. Ooh, this is going to be tougher than I thought. We might have to have a bit of a scrap on the walls. Um, let's get up here. And let's get ready to man the walls. Guys! Okay, just go there. That might help. It's a very small settlement. Uh, but we should get a good bit of a retraining at Antioch. So... I'm not too bothered about taking some large losses along the way. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to have an absolute 
dogfight on these walls. I'm gonna get you guys across and you guys across here. If we can get up this way, that'll be fine. Come on, guys, please, please, just get up the. No, do this instead. There we are. I think they could probably fire into the town square from there. So let's just take that one and then see whether we can sh shoot in. Probably definitely from this corner. It's quite close, isn't it? They do have horse... There are horse archers, though, that cavalry. So our Greek hoplites are up on the wall now. I wonder what the stats are for these Arabian... Oh, that's the Arabian archers. Let's have a look at the swordsman. Is it armor piercing? No. But 29, 13 melee, and 16 morale. We should beat them one-on-one, -on -one, but of course, it is we are on hard difficulty. So, yeah, maybe not. Those guys are coming up. Right, let's get you boys on there. Let's get you boys here. You guys come up. Throproy fighting on this side. I think it's time to get you boys up. In fact, we should probably go and take that. Those ladders. Right, archers. Now you're here. Right, archers. Let's get you back to there. You have taken some damage, though. And so have you guys, really. This is probably the best place that I want you to go. And then you can fire down on these fools. Come on, boys. Let's get up. And ideally, once you've taken this, hop the taze. Yeah, let's go straight for that wall. Once you're up, I do want to run you around so we're not getting shot. Oh, that tower's in our hands now as well. Good. Good. Our archers have taken a battering. Well, that's never great. But shoot them. You guys should be able to fire. Just halt. And ooh, not quite. Not quite. Mm, I think we come to this side and start firing at them as well. Here we are. It does seem like we're probably winning that fight just slightly. You guys get there. If you could fire Javis down on them, those guys, it would be fantastic. This is a bit. This is a little bit more scary than I was expecting. I was not expecting it to be this hard of a battle. But expect the unexpected. What are we being shot by now? Probably those Nabataeans. Uh, I think if you guys get there, you should be able to fire over them into the Arabian Swordsman. Bloody fight. Um, yeah, you guys get up and then we'll run you around this way. Again, halt. And let's see whether you can fire. Do that. Put you on guard mode as well so you don't run away. If you don't know, guys, if you put an archer on guard mode and then tell them to attack a unit, they won't chase after that unit trying to fire at them. If you leave them off guard mode and press on an attack on this unit like that, they will chase after them. So that's why I put them on guard mode a lot of the time. Um, not because I'm expecting them to get into melee, but because it's the only way of stopping them charging after the enemy like fools. <laughs> Uh, when you don't want them to fire on that enemy anymore or move position from where they previously were. This is going to be quite a brutal battle, honestly. There's going to be a lot of losses here. Those Nabataeans are firing. Yeah, that, I want you to fire there. Once you have got up, let's go all the way around. Have we got rid of that Nabataean unit? Not, not quite. Don't think we can fire all the way across there. I think we might have to get here and then fire down on these guys down here. You guys keep firing though. They've not taken a lot of losses since you've moved to this position. 
Okay, no. Just hold, just hold, just hold. They're coming back round again. Keep firing on them. Come on, the boys. Let's go. Bloody, bloody battle, eh? Hey? Fire your javies if you can. Fire your javies again if you can. Wow, this is... It's going to be... Yeah, the Arabian swordsmen are unfortunately a bit underpowered against our boys. Especially with a bit of experience. Tiny little bit of experience they have. Got a good mix of uh, some troops that have been on a little bit of a campaign. And some that haven't. Now you're in this position. Let's speed it up. And let's see whether we can fire at them. Make sure we're on guard mode like we were before. Now we'll fire on the swordsman. Oh, Archer's doing some good damage there. Where are you guys? Oh, I would like to bring you up onto this side, definitely. And then let's get those boys over there. Missed a trick there, really. Yeah, get up those ladders. Good. That's what we like to see. These boys keep firing. They're never going to use all their ammo because there's only 28 men in the unit. Ideally, get there. And let's go. As the uh, police or ambulance goes outside. I don't actually know who. In fact, I think we should come down and, and fight these guys man-to-man. -man. They've got more archers over here as well. Come on. I wish they wouldn't just sit, stand there. Go. Go. Get, in, get involved in the fighting. Okay, that should really, really shred those units there. And we are starting to win over this side as well. Archers, are you in there now? You are. And you're firing. Oh, my God. This is going to be brutal. Let's have a watch. Are you going to fire? Let's have a look how many die. Well, that was a bit of a fail, wasn't it? Not many. <laughs> there are a few of the swordsmen, actually. How many men do they have left? I've actually got a lot more men than you think left. And we've killed a lot so far. Right, let's speed it up anyway. That You can see every time the, the, the volleys come in, they are falling off the walls. So, definitely making a difference. Right, if we go a bit further across, we should get a better angle. They've nearly killed this guy now. That's good. Uh, so, what we should do, I'm going to do the rest of the battle with my Chalka Speeders. So we'll bring those guys up, ready to fight. Uh, we'll probably bring uh, uh, Antiochus the Angry up as well. <laughs> you don't really need to fire on them anymore. I'm wondering if we get to this corner, can we like fire it over that way? Surely we've got the range. Yeah, not quite on this side. Well, we'll send them there just in case they do manage to get the range eventually. Come on, boys. Kill the rest of them. And our Chalka Speeders. Let's march us in. Oh, yeah. We've not taken the uh, the gateway yet. Great. <laughs> Kill these quick, then. Come on, boys. Kill them quick. Kill them quick. There's only five of them. And we should now be in a position where we can fire into the center here. Asian Royal Bodyguards. Let's have a look. Oh, they look so good, don't they? They look fantastic. Yeah, as the arrows start to rain down on them. Using their own walls against them. Lost a few men of the Chalk Speeders to the gateway, but not for too much longer. Yeah, they're really, really down to no one now. Yeah, 33. Let's go. That should be our gateway now. Kind of tempted to just charge my uh, Zister 4 in and just kill them all in one fell swoop, but that would not be the most efficient use of the troops. Uh, what did I... Ah, see, this is it. I didn't put these guys on uh, guard mode, and they have gone chasing, fighting the enemy general. So they're firing. Who are you firing on? You should be firing on these guys. 
Oh, we won. <laughs> we won down this region. Who is this coming to fight? Some more archers. Come on, Chalka Speedes. You are so slow. Um, send the green boys forward first. I think these guys all kind of deserve a bit of a rest. So I'm going to do the rest of it with the Chalka Speedes. You've done well, boys. You've done well. I'm very pleased. Very proud of you. Even though I may be a bit angry. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Bring these guys forward. There you are. Knight speed it up again. The Asian Royal Bodyguard is going to be the scary thing. Because they can pack a punch. I'm telling you now. Uh, yeah, if we could get... Get you guys in there. Bring Antiochus forward as well. The angry man. This is not going to be great if... Uh, okay. Thought he was going to charge his Asian Royal Bodyguards in then. That would really, really destroy this poor unit. But... I think it's time to get the Chalka Speedes into the fight. So let's get you forward. And we'll bring Antiochus forward as well. As well as these two boyos. They can stand behind. Come on, move, men. Phalanx, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> when I say quick, boys, I mean quick. No, you should be in Phalanx. There we are, that's better. That should kill quite a few of them. Into the Phalanx. Get in there. Rally the boys. That's a phalanx mess. But it's better than nothing, okay? You're facing the wrong way, guys. You're genuinely facing the wrong way. But oh well. We've uh, routed a few of their Nabataeans anyway. Oh, what a mess. Br brutal battle and fair play to them. They have... They have really took the fight to us here. How many have they killed? 30% of our men in this battle. Bloody, bloody siege. That's what happens when you man the walls, guys. Uh, or should I say AI. If you just leave the walls undefended, I can run my archers around and shoot you to pieces. If you defend them, you do such a better job. Let's march forward. Yeah, they're just going to die in the charge, surely. Uh, you guys, let's get you. See whether we can do the old sandwich. The BLT. The big phalanx. No, the BP. B, BPS. <laughs> the big phalanx sandwich. <laughs> okay. Right. Very good. Let's come in. Has that broken them? It has. Broken them all, so kill them all would be the next thing. <laughs> Here come the phalanx. The last few men. I mean, we fought hard for this. Look at the mounds of dead over here. The mounds of dead on the walls. Mainly they're dead, honestly, looking at it. But look at that. So many dead. So many fallen off the walls as well. Brutal. Bloody fighting that has been going on over here. Two. Come on. You can kill those two, surely. There we are. And he's just going to charge in. The last lone horse archer. A brave charge, but it was for nothing nonetheless. Great and glorious victory once again for the Seleucid Empire. And an interesting fighting someone different again. I, I love fighting someone. Oh my god! Greek Hoplites. How did you only gain one experience? You lost 67, killed 244. Fair play. That is fantastic. I wish we could rename um, rename regiments in this game. Because I would rename them the bloody straight away. But a fantastic battle nonetheless. Nearly a 2 to 1 ratio. So can't be too upset with that on a siege battle. Anyway guys, I'll see you back on the campaign map. 
Here we are, guys. And, yeah, I think we'll enslave. Okay, well, that didn't do too much, did it? Organize herds. Iranian with Caucasian rest of the buildings. I mean, we can't upgrade that. So we'll get rid of it. It's going to help with the culture problems. And, yeah, it needs upgrading, so we'll do that. And then we'll build the Shrine to Hera, and hopefully that will be enough. It's only three turns to wait. So I'm willing to wait uh, for the time being. The rest of our money, uh, you may have noticed we've not really done much building the last couple of uh, couple of turns. And reason being, for all you campaign management stands, is because currently we have a couple of crises going on in terms of our military. Firstly, Pergamon attacked us out of nowhere. So we needed to really prioritize this army. Uh, secondly, um, down the Nile, we need our Akontistai. And thirdly, up in the northeast, uh, obviously, this army is the, the main priority <laughs> right now. So, yeah, this Bactrian army fighting that off is going to be a big, big battle. Big siege battle. Luckily, we have stone walls up here. Because otherwise, we might have been a bit, little bit screwed without any Chalka Speeders. Uh, but, yeah. That is why we haven't really prioritized building, because military right now is the essential thing, and stopping rebellions and that sort of thing. So, yeah, we, uh, we'll we keep on continuing upgrading our military, and when Seleucia is back to being non-plagued, <laughs> hopefully we'll be back to about 40,000 a turn. But for now, the rest of our money, let's build in our most productive region. As always, the region with the least amount of corruption. Let's build an academy there, though. Not necessarily for the corruption, just to get some good traits on our guys. Um, uh, there's no money building in Babylon right now. So, let's leave that out. Spend something that's going to make us money or give us population growth. Those are the two sort of priorities in this high productivity region over here. Artemita, let's go for the irrigation. Then Bertha, let's go for the crop rotation. And Kelonai, let's go for the market. And then a thousand. I'm sure we'll not find anything to build for a thousand. We will. A temple. It's okay. We'll leave that thousand then. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to end that here. A bit of a longer episode, I think, than usual, but a good episode nonetheless. We bounced back after our defeats uh, in the previous episode in the Summer of Blood. So, yeah, we have bounced back. We are now on turn 69. Nice. Um, so not too long until we should get the reforms, I believe. Should be about turn 100. So, yeah. Should get that. Um pretty soon hopefully so guys thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always please do like and subscribe all that good stuff remember to uh comment whether you are clan gar or clan scar who you prefer but thank you very much for watching guys it's been a pleasure and i will see you all again on the next video